this movie is a poster, right? It's Arnold oh, yeah. on a poster, praying it, looking at the camera like, boo! That literally is the poster. Yeah. Like, it's Arnold looking at the camera, Emma Thompson over his shoulder like, ha, 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 he's got my baby. And then Danny DeVito looking like he's going to harvest that baby out of his stomach. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Coddington, my fellow co-host and filmmaker, John Woolscroft. Brian, I got great news. Great a news. Vi- a very clumsy English scientist gave me her eggs. So and now I'm pregnant with my it, own it ch- jizz. <laughs> so you're gonna tell me next that you're your own grandpa. <laughs> I'm my, my own, own grandpa. grandpa. Uh, yeah, I Brian think you, and I are men of a certain age. <laughs> you and I, John, might be the only people who actually know where that song came from. <laughs> it came from a movie called The Stupids. It's glorious. Go check it out. I think it's from like 96 or 95. 96. Yeah, that's the movie 96. you have to direct yeah. after you kill three people with a helicopter. We don't have to talk about that. Yeah, okay. we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens. But no, this this week we are, are still in Arnold month, even though it is now September. As you can tell by my voice, no? it's not it's not as 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 oh. luxurious as usual. And that's because I am recovering from covid. Oh. Well, Brian, you know Sucks. we're going to lose that 150 listeners that just tune in to jerk off to you. I mean, I don't 150 listeners. Wow. Yeah, just that voice, you know, it's like what when I talk that edges them. They're like, "Come on, shut up, guy. Talk, stop talking about boners. I want to hear Brian talk again." Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sorry, friends. Maybe <laughs> check in next week. You know, the voice might be back to normal then. But uh, yeah, I'm still recovering from COVID. Fun times. That's what happens when you go and travel anywhere. <laughs> Brian, you how know, many how many COVIDs does this make for you? I think this might be number four. Ooh, see, I've only I've amazingly only had one. Only one. Yeah. Spider-Man Far From Home. Thanks a lot, Spider-Man. It was well, a sold out theater. I have my snacks, no mask <coughs> on. Yeah, I paid for it. Well, I mean, to be fair, I, I live in a house with, with five other people. That'll do it. So, like, you know, it, it was one of the things, this is a tangent, but when I first met my wife, you know, and, and, and met her kids, who are now my stepsons, you know, I never got sick, ever, maybe like once every couple years. But the first time I met them, and within the first couple months of meeting them and hanging out with them, I was catching every cold and flu like I was, I was almost making up for lost time. Little, so little petri dishes, man. Oh friend. my god! So, yeah. so like, yeah. The the fact that I've only had four is is pretty good. Yeah. And it, and honestly, like we had masked up and done all the stuff, everything, and and held off getting COVID for a long time. Um, I think it was probably like twenty twenty two was the first time we got it. But no, this was this was all uh, because we went to Washington D.C. because we went to podcast move a bit, and yeah, we kind of just took our eye off the ball there and was like, eh, we don't need a mask." And sure enough, we did need a mask. Um, but we're all okay. Everyone in the house is fine. It's just uh, it's fun when you're also celebrating your birthday, yeah. and you get hit with COVID. Yeah, let, let's acknowledge that <laughs> Brian had a birthday. So. I had a birthday. All of you listeners, he he won't be able to hear you except in his heart. Say happy birthday, Brian. Ah, uh, there was. You know what would make <laughs> me really happy for my birthday, John? You know what my wish is? What's that? Is that uh, people subscribe and they like and they hit the bell on this podcast. And, you know, it'd be really cool if you leave us like a review or a comment and you say something that isn't like, you know, stop making the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so don't Brian, leave me that comment. I don't want that comment. <laughs> so Brian literally just asked you for ten minutes of your time to give him a free present. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. And if you have the 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 money to send me a real present, DM me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll send, tell send you where to send presents. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but we got a present today. Oh, Speaking of birthdays, it's actually it's a good segue, right? Because we're talking about. The present that is Junior from 1994. You have a very interesting definition of what a present is. Well, I mean, maybe this is the present that you get when it's like 
someone gets you a present and it's they think they know what you like, right? They have an idea in their head of what you might like, but they get you the present and you're like, you don't know shit about me. It's like, <laughs> like yeah. someone who gets you like socks. It's like, yeah, you got me a subscription to Cigar the Monk Club. My father died of throat cancer. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's that kind of present. It's like someone said, oh, well, John really likes Arnold Schwarzenegger. So let me get him a movie. <laughs> <laughs> or he or, or Brian really likes likes the movie Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. So let me get him something like that, but not that. <laughs> well, I'm not the first person to say this, and I'm not going to be the last person to say this. So I don't I don't want to sound like I'm super original here. But this movie is a poster, right? Yes. It's Arnold oh, yeah. on a poster, praying it, looking at the camera like boo you know and i mean you're not half wrong that literally is the poster like it's arnold looking at the camera emma thompson over his shoulder like ha 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 he's got my baby and then danny devito looking like he's going to harvest that baby out of his stomach Mm -hmm. and i will see i remember going to what was the nice theater in erie which ended up becoming the the shitty dollar theater in Erie. i love how that works yeah it was like the second run of a movie and you could go see it at the dollar theater each ticket was a buck but when it was the good theater we went into i i don't know in 19 what was it 93 you said 94 was when this 94 yeah so maybe we're walking into forrest gump or something i don't know what the fuck we were walking into but there was a poster on the wall right before we got in the theater for junior and my mom's dipshit friend being the dipshit that she was with well, I gotta go see that because wow. Arnold's pregnant, you know. So that that was the whole marketing campaign of this movie. Come see the Terminator have a baby. What? Can you believe it? Yeah, this was at a weird time in movies. Like ninety four, that's when you also had like Groundhog's Day and Forrest Gump and all these sort of like. They're not necessarily bad movies. They're just kind of like fantastical, you know? Well, it was also those those comedy movies. I, I say this one and other mo- movies ushered in the whole the score will never end and it will always oh tell God. you how to feel. Oh, my God. I hate the score in this movie so much. And it's like I've heard that score a thousand times, too. Like you could take the score of Junior and then put it in the movie Tommy Boy and vice versa, and it's the same score. In and out, liar, liar. Yes. I know, because I pointed this out, cheap plug, cheap plug, for my in it's and fine. out. It's not cheap plug. Yeah, my in and out video, I did check-in on that on my YouTube channel, Jada's Video Nasties, go subscribe now. But I pointed out that it has what I call the liar, liar score, which is yeah. the never-ending score that tells you exactly how to feel at all times. Yeah, yeah. It's It's almost like if you had a live studio audience Mm -hmm. and the studio audience's reaction was the score like oh yay ooh, like that is honestly the score in this is just that every time someone makes a wacky thing or every time that that arnold schwarzenegger's sad or danny devito's sad or danny devito's happy or what's his face you know frank langella comes in like dracula because he was dracula you know there the score will tell you how to feel every time you wait, you mean blink and you might think it's Christopher Plummer in your memory. <laughs> <laughs> no man's Frank Langella. He was, he was a fantastic Dracula and he also played Skeletor at masters of the universe. Yes, he did. Oh, only one. You know what? There might not be only one blade, but there's only been one Skeletor. There is, there will always be only one Skeletor. <laughs> Oh, shit. But, Brian, my biggest issue with this movie is that it takes itself way too fucking serious. And Does I, it, though? I just... Where are the jokes? Where's the outrageousness? Where's the over-the-topness? Like, this movie is so bogged down in... They clearly have done enough research to bastardize science. Like, they wanted... To make sure that they weren't too outrageous. I call it like the Jurassic Park line of thinking like, yeah. you know, like, oh, well, dino DNA and the fossilizing, even though that, uh, you know, the bio level of a DNA strand is dead by then. But but the, at least they made it believable. 
I think they wanted to focus so much on the idea that a man could carry a child at least to a point and to focus on the science of that and have your main star of the movie. Arnold is pregnant. Wow, can you believe it? A little wacky shenanigans is going to ensue. He's the straight man. But they're all the straight man. I mean, even Emma Thompson is, even though she's falling down all the time because they go, she needs to fall on her ass because we don't have any jokes. That is the joke, though, John, is that Emma Thompson is is quite literally the, the absent-minded professor. Yep. What was that? <laughs> No, I was gonna scientist. say, yeah, yeah, she's just goofy, bizarro scientist, klutzy, always gonna fall into things, always gonna throw things, gonna have, you know. I'm surprised no one got impaled like through the eye, you know, during the dinner scene. But <laughs> no, I mean, th- y- you are right to a point that this movie doesn't have a clear comedic direction. That's, I think, what what you would call it is. There's no clear comedic direction. And I find it funny because this is a movie that was directed by Ivan Reitman. Mr. Ghostbuster. Mr. Ghostbuster, who ushered in one of the greatest comedies ever. And this just kind of doesn't land perfectly. You know, Danny DeVito is at times, you know, goofy. But then at the same time, he you feel bad for him at certain points. And, you know, Arnold, he comes off at the beginning of this movie very much flat and monotone and Austrian because that's who he's supposed to be. And then over the course of the movie adds in some goofiness that <clears throat> doesn't necessarily make him funny, but just kind of makes it weird. Like, oh, ha ha. Men can have sore nipples, too. Yeah. Well, let, OK. Let- Let's take a moment and look at Arnold's like track record with comedy. I I feel it's Not like good. I feel it's like two and two. And what I mean by that is there are ones that focus on the fact that he's a giant Austrian and and that works. Like Twins does that and I'm I'm escaping on the other. But on the other end, we have this one where he's supposed to be I'm a scientist. No you're not. No, and he's not. You know, and jingle all the way where I'm an ad executive or something like that. No, you not. know, and it's like, no, you're not. Yeah. No. Even, you know, Phil Hartman in Jingle All the Way had to improv a line where it's like, you can't power lift your way out of this one or body slam your way out of this one. He's, it was it was power lift. Oh, and the other comedy was Kindergarten Cop. OK, he's like on the police force. OK, sure. He He's a big, bad cop in an outrageous fish out of water example i don't really like any of arnold's comedies twins is but and i know he desperately wanted to be as much of a family man comedy guy as much as an action star but god damn arnold stay in your lane and this one to me is is the worst of the lot yeah well here's the thing and this is why i think some of his comedy does work Mm. and it's it's exactly your point when The fact that he is Arnold Schwarzenegger and we, the audience, know that and we, the audience, see the repercussions of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the situation. That's where it becomes funny. Twins is funny because it's Arnold Schwarzenegger and his biological twin, Danny DeVito. Let's see what happens. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) that's, That's what that movie is. Kindergarten cop Arnold Schwarzenegger as a kindergarten teacher. Like, can you imagine? Can you imagine the hilarity? How can he handle children? So, I mean, those movies work because of the absurdity. That is what makes those work. Junior, though. It's it's less bizarre and less focused than, say, kindergarten cop, you know, and and the whole thing, I think I think they were playing off of like, well, Arnold Schwarzenegger can't be a scientist, so let's throw him. He's but he does it in such a way that it's not Arnold; it's whatever this weird, you know, Austrian scientist that he's playing is. You yeah. know, if he was playing Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, as a scientist, like what we know, like I I think that would work better. But he just he can't he can't do that. It doesn't work. Because it comes off phony. 
Yeah, and you can't cover him too much up in like suits and be like, oh, he looks like everyone else. Like, no, he's like no, he six doesn't. foot six and he's the biggest brick shit house on the planet. Yeah, yeah. He's still fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. So the problem this movie has bit with Arnold at least is that they they're trying to normalize him. And you can't. You can't normalize. Every the movies that you and I like with Arnold Schwarzenegger in them, including Jingle All the Way, which is a classic. <laughs> it's it's when Arnold isn't normalized when that absurdity kind of rears its ugly head in this movie that absurdity doesn't rear its ugly head as much because you've got characters like you know you know Danny DeVito in this you've got you know Emma Thompson in this those are kind of competing against Arnold's absurdity right well Arnold's best when he's like He's an ex-Marine. He's an ex-Navy SEAL. Yes. Yeah, he's a cop. You know, there's a reason that in two separate Hulk Hogan led movies, Hulk Hogan played a character who was a retired wrestler. And in one movie, he played a wrestler because Hulk Hogan is an abomination of God and no one else looks like him. The only <laughs> one, though, that worked where he was neither of those was when he was an intergalactic, not bounty hunter, but soldier. Brian, we've been teasing this so long. We got to do Suburban Commando. As soon as we possible. have to do Suburban Commando. <laughs> I was frozen today. <laughs> so good. <laughs> no, this is the 90s. We're going to sue you. We're going to sue you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for him to just be, I'm a scientist, it's like. It doesn't work. Eh. Even just some reference to. Look, I know that you were in the Austrian Olympic team while you were getting your medical degree. You know, some clunky piece of dialogue to explain it. But, but Brian, let me ask you this. Like, would this have been better with the Santa Claus or liar, liar logic instead of them focusing so much on voodoo science, shall we say, like where Arnold and his wife, Emma Thompson, who are just married in this premise, can't get married or can't get can't conceive a child and you oh, i wish that i could have a baby <laughs> you know and then like a shooting star goes outside the window and he was like <laughs> you know like would it be like would magic have been better like or is it just is it better grounded in shall we say science i mean i i think i don't i don't have so much of a problem with the science point of view of this and how he becomes pregnant it, it is grounded in some things you know w women do suffer complications during pregnancy so like clearly the idea of arnold schwarzenegger who is not the type of doctor that i would think would specialize in this but sure okay movie we'll go down that path you know making a fertility drug makes sense where this movie loses me though with the science is how does the fertility drug make it so that his body allows for an impregnated ovum like the, the that that that's the thing for me because yeah. here's the thing even though yes you you know females and males are from the same species there are biological differences the only reason like, men like have nipples is yeah. that we all start out as female true yeah. but but you and i john don't have uteruses mm -hmm. so well, what is the baby gonna attach to well that okay. was my thinking is like how, how does that work well apparently arnold can nut and cut and then it can jam it into emma thompson's frozen ovaries yeah i know put that it in arnold's butt <clears throat> right then shock him with electrocution and a baby's made i the science no i put this that's, movie i'm like what that that's what i'm saying john is like i could buy the science up to a point the point is when they're literally saying well we can just attach it to your abdominal wall you're good so it's it, like that doesn't make any sense because I'm sorry, there is more to carrying a child in your stomach than just, oh, semen and egg and boom. And, oh, yeah, you're taking progesterone and you're taking estrogen at high levels. 
that still is not going to replace the fact that you don't have a womb. You don't have a uterine lining to provide nourishment to that baby over the course of the, the, the nine months. Yeah, is Arnold taking prenatal vitamins? Like, is he? Well, doing- I mean, I'm assuming he is, but like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, just the yes. structural nature of how human beings are reproduced. Just because he's taking a fertility drug that allows his body not to attack the 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 ovum, that that doesn't mean much when when you literally don't have the structures in place that a female does well brian i'm gonna shock our audience right now oh. i don't know if they're ready for this oh but i am not exactly an expert neither on, am i on the inner workings of the female body <laughs> and, neither am I. and birth and babies but i will i i imagine while watching the first part of this movie that you know put neil degrasse tyson in a room and he might say like yeah, I guess technically, scientifically, a baby for the first month could exist in a male body or blah. blah. But when the movie's like, it's like I'm gonna carry this baby to term. It's like, no, you're not. And no, I say you can't. This, I say this knowing nothing, but I know that's not true. I know you can't do that. <laughs> I, well, that's what I'm going like. I'm going like one. I, I can't even buy the first trimester because, as I said, where is the baby getting nourishment from? There's no uterus. <laughs> there's no uterine wall. There's there's nothing to grab onto. So it's like, and, and again, I am not a biologist. I am not a scientist. I am I'm a man who knows that that I'm sorry. We're deficient in this part. And that's okay. And even Emma Thompson says, she's like, you fuckers had to steal this one from us too. And you know what? I'm like, yeah, 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 I get it. Because this is something that, that we, we don't have that ability. Men do not have that ability. And, and this is the part of the science that I'm just like, did, did anyone in the script think like, maybe we could like talk about that? Like someone would have said like, Hey, how's that baby going to be like, you know, supported with food and nourishment over those nine months when you don't have a uterine wall? Sounds like they should have got Michael Crichton on this script. He could have just bogged it down with <laughs> science exposition. Well, I, I know that they're just like, well, he, he's taking all the 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 like all the different like drugs that someone would make if they're doing a sex change. It's like, OK, that still doesn't explain the lack of a uterus and a placenta and all that goes with it like there's that's still not there <laughs> not not to get overly political but brian you know if this movie came out today like the daily wire like would oh fucking god. freak out so bad over oh this my movie. god this this movie would cause you know people like ben shapiro's head to explode it would but, just but i will say in an election year where women's you know bodily autonomy is on the ballot it is it it does seem that like oh two decades ago maybe we were a bit flippant on something that women have over men that we can never have and that so many men try to police because they can't have it themselves so yeah it's funny looking at movies in that context like no, I mean, yeah, it was 20 years ago. They didn't know what 20 years later was going to look like, nor nor should they try to project the future. But it's like, oh, it's kind of awkward to kind of take a look at this now. Yeah, I mean, it is. It, and again, like, as you said, kind of hindsight yeah. <laughs> being 2020 here, you know, they, they had no idea that, you know, you'd still be waging battles that really were kind of fought and done and settled you know decades ago that's why that's why a movie like this can exist in the 90s is because we all thought like oh we're done you know this is established you know that sort of thing for the two conservatives still listening to the podcast i'm about to lose you right now and i'm just going to take a soapbox stand 
if you want to debate abortion, I'll listen to you. I think you're full of shit if you don't think a woman has the right to choose what to do with her body. But I'll at least listen to you. If you don't believe in IVF, go fuck yourself. Yes, yeah, sir. Go fuck yourself six ways to Sunday. Let's talk a little bit about some of these characters. We talked a bit about Arnold. Let's talk about Danny DeVito. His character, because he's the kind of the other he's got the other half of this whole thing. You know, because Emma Thompson's in there, but she's more in there for comedic relief until like yeah. two thirds of the way the movie's done. You know, so, John, talk a little bit about Danny. Well, see, here's my problem with Danny in this is that it's the polar opposite of what I call the Batman forever problem where, uh, you know, obviously you got Jim Carrey. He's going to be going over the top all the time as crazy as possible. And then you got Tommy Lee Jones. Who's jealous. Who's like, I'm going to overtop the overtop guy. And it's like, not possible. It, it doesn't work because, you know, Catwoman and penguin worked, you know, and that, that play off of each other. But when you guys are just trying to overtop each other, like what the fuck are you doing? You're ruining Do you the think- movie. Do you think Danny DeVito tries to overtop Arnold in this? No, no, no. I'm saying it's literally the 180. The both Arnold and Danny are the straight man, and there's no comedic figure. Like oh. that that's the problem I have with this movie's supposed <coughs> to be a comedy, but I don't know where the jokes are. I don't know where the humor is because Danny DeVito is the straight man, but Arnold is the straight, straight man. And so how do you have two straight men? Where, where, where's the joke come from? It's just two scientists talking shop. Well, I think I think the joke comes from like, you know, Danny DeVito comes at it from where he always came at at every. It, so it's funny. It's it's hard to kind of nail Danny DeVito's character across most of his movies in the late eighties and and nineties because he's kind of playing the same variation of himself. Like, I love Dan DeVito. I seriously love him. Me too. And he's gotten better with age, with sh- with mo- shows like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where now he's just leaning into just being off the wall, batshit insane. But, like, this time period, I'd say from 89 through through this time period, 94, you know, you've got the same character that he played in, like, The War of the Roses, right? Mm-hmm. He's that same kind of swarthy kind of, you know, back room dealing type of person it just his profession just might change and that's kind of what i got the vibe of him is that he just wants to make money that's it but you're right he's not like trying to to he's not trying to sell he's not trying to like sell your 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 shoes out from under you right he just wants to make money through pharmaceuticals i mean i think he i think he's focused on the science you know, and you yeah, might say a little bit this the swarmy could be like almost like, well, so was Dr. Frankenstein. But I think that he wants this for the greater good of science more than he is like, I want triumph or I want. Success. No, I think he wants money. He literally is saying all over and over. We need to do this study for the pharmaceutical dollars that I'm going to get. Like he literally says that in this movie That's multiple true. times yeah. and everything that he does from getting on the plane with with Arnold Schwarzenegger and trying to convince him and manipulate him. Even Arnold says, you're trying to manipulate me, aren't you? And he's like, yes, I am. He's not doing it necessarily for the glory. I think Arnold does this for that glory. He's more of that Dr. Frankenstein type person. Mm-hmm. But I really think Danny DeVito is doing this for the money. He's just a little bit less extreme. And I think this is what you're pointing out, John, is your problem is that he's less extreme than what we're used to, you know? And that was the thing I found with, with a movie like war of the roses where, you know, he is really less extreme in that movie. Instead, letting the comedic people be Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. Yeah. So they're the ones who, and, and it kind of fits in what you're talking about of, there's no one here who is though those kind of off the wall characters to react against. It's yeah, it's like it's the nutty professor. Like the yeah. nutty professor is the comic relief, and everybody else around him is like, "Whoa, you just hit the controls on that lab equipment with your big butt." Whoa, you know? but I do have a, but I do I want I have a question for you? Do you think that as Arnold gets more and more pregnant, that he 
turns into that comedic character? I think they I think they wanted him to, but I don't think they succeeded. I think because they put him in situations where he is kind of funny. I mean, he has symptoms of pregnancy, and I would obviously we're two dudes with we're attitudes, dudes. but I would like to hear if a woman finds the idea of Arnold having pregnancy effects funny, but just him having them. I'm like, where is the punchline? The my nipples are tender. I'm sad because I watched a commercial. I eat tons of different foods because I'm pregnant. It's like, where's the punchline? It's just Arnold is, he's just pregnant. So he's having I, female yeah. estrogen leveled <coughs> emotions. I did find it funny when he said that he's like, everything makes me horny. <laughs> 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 everything makes me horny. And he, well, I forget what he referred to his, his erection as, but he, he used some German word for it. And Danny V was like, what is that? And he's like, oh, oh, yeah, okay, I get it. He's like, that happens. That happens anytime. <laughs> but I think he referred to his erection as his nanny. <laughs> oh, that's that's a deep cut there. Um, <laughs> now, now one, th- one thing I did find funny, because you're pointing out to like the comedic scenes of this, is how the the standard montage that we get with an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, which is usually him like suiting up, getting ready to kick ass or some shit like that is replaced by him being in like that, that pregnancy retreat. Like that's the montage we get that. Okay. I'm like, okay, this is in line for some yuck. Yuck. Cause big old Arnold is dressed like a lady. Yes. And, He's trying to talk like a lady, but he's still Arnold and he can't do any other voice. But he's doing Lamar's class. Yeah. And it's like, okay, here are some jokes. (laughs) (laughs) We finally have some jokes. Uh, Yeah. Well, he's like, I I, I miss not a man. Is that it? What was it? It's like miss not a man or something like that. Or. Oh, I don't know. Joanna man. (laughs) <laughs> Joanna man yeah there, there's another yeah deep that's cut. another classic yeah. no I, I guess for me John like like that section what was funny about it was was just how it, every Arnold Schwarzenegger movie you have the montage right and this one the montage is so completely different from every Arnold Schwarzenegger movie because it is just him being a woman that's pregnant in a retreat and being with all of these other women who are also pregnant and doing these things. I like he's sitting there getting tea and crumpets and, you know, doing Lamaze class and doing workouts. And it, it's it's funny in, a, in its absurdity. That's where I find the humor at. Well, <coughs> and dear audience, please understand that I'm not making even dingleberry's comment in the sun on anything about about trans people when i say no this. this is that's important no. to point out is that arnold is supposed to be portraying somebody who was gender identified at birth as female yes and he has a giant adam's apple and people that are gender identified based <coughs> on their sex organs People who have penises at birth have Adam's apples. People who have vulvas do not. And Arnold has a gigantic Adam's apple yeah. when he's dressed as a woman. And I'm surprised nobody at this woman's retreat went, hmm. <laughs> wait a tick. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's, it, I, I just, I found that sequence just kind of funny in its absurdity when you compare it to other Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Arnold, Arnold. Yeah, I. It might be the the funniest visual. I don't that's, know that's if the scene did it, but yeah, Arnold in a dress. Oh, look at the big Austrian well, bodybuilder. Well, it's just funny when he's yeah. talking to the director and 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 he's telling them how when in, he was in the East German like Olympic team that they injected all of them with steroids, and Danny B was like, "Yeah, they were just handing it out like it was candy." And and he's like, but I'm all woman. <laughs> but isn't Arnold supposed to be Austrian? 
I mean, it doesn't matter what his character is, but isn't Arnold from Austria? Yeah, he's supposed to, he's from Austria. So or his why, character his character is from Austria, but he I believe yeah he is actually I, from Austria. Well, he probably wanted to be like yeah our neighbors to the the south or I think it's the south. I don't know my geography. Uh, sorry for those that know the geography. Yeah, it, it was the Germans, not the Austrians, because yeah, I don't want to be associated with them. No, <laughs> yeah. no. But yeah, so d- just moving on. Do we want to talk about Frank Langella in this? Dracula. Yeah, it really his presence in this to me felt like it was. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brian. Well, Christopher Plummer in Gremlins too. Christopher Plummer, no, not Christopher Plummer wasn't in Gremlins too. There was the the scientist. No, that was Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee. Sorry, I got the he wrong. He was also Chris. Dracula. Yeah, I he got was the also wrong Dracula. Yeah, pardon me, audience. I got the wrong Chris. Like it reminded me of like, but in the wrong way of like. You're distracting to me. <laughs> well, he just kind of pops in there because he's our villain character, and his name is yeah. Baines. Yeah. Baines. And I'm like, oh, of course you're the villain. Your fucking name is Baines. Baines. Uh, Baines. Baines is here. He's gonna find out that I'm pregnant. It's like okay, but he's just kind of a weak villain. Oh yeah, he's just a weak villain because all he does is like. He's if first of all, he's like supporting them in the beginning of the movie, you know, like he's with them during the FDA trial and all that stuff. And you find out he's on the board, so he could have approved this thing. No problem. But again, he's the villain and he, we have to prove that he's a douchebag. So, yeah, he he just every five minutes he pops in. He's either one trying to steal Emma Thompson from Arnold Schwarzenegger, which <laughs> good luck, not going to happen. And and two is trying to figure out what Dane DeVito and Schwarzenegger are doing. Like, he's just sleuthing around. That's it. And I like how they've been kind of, like, told, like, go home, but they just still hang around, like, yeah. the lab, hanging out with Emma Thompson. That's and- like if you lost your job and, like, they, they you actually, like, got fired, but then you just decided, hey, you know what? I'm still going to have lunch here every day. <laughs> So I'm just going to pop in the lunchroom, hang out with you guys, eat my lunch. And then, you know, maybe I'll stick around a little bit later, but maybe, you know, I'm, I might leave. I might not. Brian, do you ever see that Robin Williams movie? One hour photo. Yes. Remember that scene where he like he shows up to get his film process. Yes. Like, get the fuck out of here. And, and, and Bill Lumberg is like, you can't be here anymore. <laughs> yeah. You can, that's that's honestly one of Robin Williams best films. One hour photo. Creepy yeah. as fuck. Mm hmm. Oh man, so good. But no, I, 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 I'm serious. Like they, they fire them, but they're still showing up, <laughs> and it makes no sense. And that's only because Emma Thompson's like, yeah, you can use my lap space. Well, yeah, and also Arnold has to bang Emma Thompson, or of else, of course, he's he he might have the gay. Well, it it makes sense in this movie. It wraps it all up in a nice little bow when you realize that. The the ovum that that Danny DeVito stole, kind of like in Young Frankenstein when when <laughs> Igor goes to steal the brain, it kind of gave me that vibe. Abby like, Cervix. Abby Cervix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be the funny thing. Or if he dropped it, <laughs> picked it back up, just dusted it off. But yeah, it, it gave me that vibe of like he he's he's skulking around stealing the ovum from Emma Thompson's freezer that she has her mobile freezer and steals the one that's named Junior. We find out later in the movie that that's actually Emma Thompson's ovum that she froze for herself. So it makes sense, right? It make it all it wraps up nice. There there are there is so so many problems. <laughs> with this we stole your frozen (laughs) eggs we put them into an austrian male bodybuilder we put them in the terminator and you're gonna be a mob (laughs) now because we also put his jizz butter in your ex and well it i mean it, it is very wrong on so many levels just because it completely takes away any of emma thompson's agency in any of this we 94, don't know, brother. brother. 94. <laughs> I, I know that, but I'm just telling you, like, 
Did Emma Thompson want kids? Did Emma Thompson want to be in a relationship with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. Y- you know, all of these things, it's funny in, in, in watching it, and it's like, well, yeah, it just worked out because, of course, they love each other, and, of course, they want to be in a relationship now. But it's like, do you realize how wrong this is on how many levels? Yeah. Like, it's, it's really wrong. It's the idea that, like, two good-looking people in the same field, of course, they're going to they have to fuck. They don't even have any say in it. What What if Emma Thompson's character was into women? <gasps> Brian, this is before I, I'm Ellen. Saying, no, but I, I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. what if she was into women and not men? Imagine that. That that like this is the more you think about this movie, the less funny it is. <laughs> Could you imagine the emotional trauma? Of let's say a lesbian Emma Tom- yeah we don't remember their names because they're that forgettable, but a lesbian Emma Thompson movie goes you have impregnated a man <laughs> with my eggs. I now need you to abort my baby that's in a man. <laughs> the the therapy <laughs> that would have to come from this. Well, let's just be honest here. If there, if if none of these characters are getting therapy afterwards, yeah. something's wrong with them because th- this whole situation should just bring nothing but continual therapy for the rest of their life and the rest of that kid's life too. Because eventually, that kid has to be told, like, "Hey, by the way, here's yeah. where you were born. You were born from your daddy." <laughs> yeah, suck on that. <laughs> or or one of these days, like like Arnold Schwarzenegger's going into the pool or something and kids can be like hey dad how'd you get that scar on your stomach the wall <laughs> you know the i was wall. fighting a predator <laughs> <laughs> your dad was the terminator and i got yeah. stabbed by a t-1000 yeah. and that's where babies come from yeah it, it's just it, the, the more you think about this it is such a violation <laughs> And I know that some people who are going to be watching this or reviewing it or, or, or listening to this, they'll be like, Brian, John, why can't you just chill the fuck out? <laughs> and I agree. Yeah. But to one point, part of our job here is to kind of analyze these movies in a way that is not just surface level. So I can't t- turn my brain off. And, John, I know you can't turn your brain off. When you're quite literally thinking of things like, yeah. one, that body can't support a baby. Yeah. And two, the, the the moral implications of this are so bastardized. <laughs> it's, it's so wrong on so many levels. Well, weirdly, there are, I mean, I'll, I will admit, razor thin connections to the whole idea of the Frankenstein parable. It is. But the whole point is that Dr. Frankenstein went, oh, no, I played God. And here are the horrific, like, replications of what I've done. Yes. <laughs> this movie is just like everything worked out. What a happy end. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's like let's let, let throw more James Newton Howard music over it. Mm. That's that'll let us know everything is fine. And yeah. and oh, yeah, don't worry, because they all ended up together. And hey, a year from now. Emma Thompson's going to be pregnant, but for real, you know, one that she really actually wanted and talked with Arnold maybe about having and I don't know, had the agency to want to have that kid and not have it foisted upon them because that's the thing, too. And I mean, I have kids and I can tell you that when you have kids, your life does change. And the amount of responsibility that you now have. I'm shaking it's not my head in you. agreement. I mean, I, I know abstra- I'm shaking my head in agreement. I, abstractly, I understand. As somebody that does not have kids, yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying, like, you have a scientist like Emma Thompson who's all about her work, and now suddenly it's, hey, you're going to have this kid. By the way, you didn't know about the kid for nine months, but it's coming. Just so you know. You know that th- it, there's so many things wrong with just the the main plot of this that really like I and honestly, folks, like you know, 
I actually enjoyed watching this movie. But as I think more about it, I'm like, this is so wrong on so many levels. Well, there's there's a guy I really love on YouTube, Ryan George. He just pitch meetings, and anytime that like, because he's a, he's a screenwriter pitching to himself, who's an executive, and anytime that the executive brings up like moral implication, he goes, oh, "I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about that." He's, "Oh, let me get off of that thing," you know. So it's really kind of like, yeah, I could just see it now. I. I this movie's never been done by him, but just asking all these moral questions and him just like, I'm going to need you to get all the way off my back on that. We're just going to have a scene at the beach where everybody has their new babies and everything's fine. you know. And speaking of that, we didn't talk necessarily about Danny DeVito's plot in oh, this. Yeah, about how his ex-wife's like, you're the best in the biz. I need you to deliver my baby because I fucked every member of Aerosmith. And Well, to be fair... <laughs> To be fair, she said she only had sex with Aerosmith's fitness instructor. That was it. Which adds up. They were all dirty, filthy old men by then. Yeah. The fitness instructor, that's who you do want to get with. But anyways. Yeah. But yeah, they're divorced. But I don't think the movie earned their reconciliation throughout. Not really. But just the idea of Danny DeVito delivering a baby. From the woman he used to love, he goes, hey, let's get the band back together. No pun intended. She went, yeah, you want to raise my kid? He went, yeah, and I also want to fuck you every Wednesday at 745. She went, remember, 746. He's like, oh, yeah, I know you don't like it on the fives. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, what, what I find funny is that, that that actress, Pamela Reed, played that character. And, you know, you get the idea that, like, even though they're divorced, there's still a reluctancy to like separate because obviously she only wants to have Danny DeVito deliver her kid. But yeah, you know, he kind of comes in and and he you get the idea that Danny DeVito and this does play back to kind of his whole thing about being the straight man in this. You know, he divorces his wife because of obviously stress in the marriage. He tried for like seven years to have a kid. Obviously, other things are in that mix as well, but it I sounds like so. that that I'd hope so, yeah. that that was a main stressor there, you know. So when he sees that he is she's pregnant, he immediately thinks like back to that time that they had sex nine months ago. <laughs> you know, because apparently they're still hooking up, <laughs> even though they're divorced. But, you know, I got to say, when that baby was born towards the end. And as a as a dad myself, I did tear up a little bit because like you, you, you see Dane DeVito, he's clearly got this kind of smarthy kind of like, you know, attitude towards things. But down down around, he's still a decent human being. As you said, John, he wants to do something for women, he wants to help women out. Um, and, you know, he also wants to be a dad and he gets to now finally be a dad. And I'm like, I, I, I teared up a little bit. Yeah, and I gotta say, Brian told me this before we started recording, and like that's got to be the the great divider between me, JD Vance's worst enemy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a childless monster who uh, sociopath. I thought JD Vance's worst enemy was like a room without a couch. Yeah, I was gonna say plastic guard on that couch. Oh, plastic yeah. coverings yeah. on couches. Yeah, no, you can't fuck that. And oh, a reruns of Flipper being taken off TV, so he can't jerk <laughs> off. But I, mean, <laughs> I hope the one guy who, who gave us a second chance, who gave us that review, <laughs> just listen to those fuckers. <laughs> but anyway, those assholes. It's like, well, we well, listen, dude, we lost yeah. them when we talked about being pro-choice. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, no, I mean that is. You know, people see movies differently based on their experiences in life. It's and true, Brian. Yeah. Like he teared up. I did not. It's also probably also based not just on the fact that Brian has kids and I don't, but Brian's a much better person than I am. I don't know about that. I would I would I would I wouldn't say yeah. that, John. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's three hundred and what or twenty three. I don't I don't yeah. know what we're not numbering these anymore. But yeah. there's about three hundred and twenty something episodes yeah. of us being equally horrible people. <laughs> but I, yeah. I mean I just gotta say, like, you know, going through the experience of 
seeing your child born, it does change you when you see movies that have those sort of things in there. You know, I used to never be able to watch a pet cemetery that one scene in pet cemetery where the kid gets killed. And it was more or less just like, you know, just not wanting to see a kid get killed. But now it's a thing where I, I honestly can't watch any of pet cemetery at all because it affects me very differently than before when I had kids. I used to only just not be able to watch that section, right? But now I can't watch the whole thing because the whole idea of like, you know, you have to sit there and kill your kid that you brought back from the dead. And then you have to kill your wife that you brought back from the dead. And all like that stuff is horrifying to me and does hit on a different note having kids now than before. That, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, for me, that scene where where the 18 wheeler comes like that was intense i think for me or anybody that sees it because she did such a good job directing it that like if, if it affected me that way not having kids i can't imagine it well that Adam. that scene yeah. always affected me but it never yeah. affected me on a level that i could relate to that and it's a thing now where like you know certain things that i'll watch or like i was recently why we're, we're going on a true crime kick okay I don't know if you do that, too. We're going on a true crime kick. And, oh, I'm with you know, Christine. Yeah, of course. Any, anytime you get a true crime kick and you see stuff with kids, you're just like immediately affected by it. You're just like, OK, kids not going to be on the porch for the next couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> kids are going to play on the porch out the side by themselves, you know, and yeah, yeah. it's funny you should mention because even Stephen King, he shelved <laughs> in like a drawer in his house pet cemetery for years because he was troubled by what he created and then they went hey cokehead you need another book and he went ah, i got this one i mean it's it's a very troubling story and yeah. i mean it, it but getting back to kind of junior and everything <laughs> oh is that what we're talking about yeah, that's what we're talking about john <laughs> you know when you have children and you see things like child being born in a movie it does affect you. So like I did tear up and I got to see like, oh, Dan, if you finally got to get what he wanted, which was not just his wife back, but he wanted to get a family, you know, and that's the thing is like his character is always just single solitary. You know, when we see him not trying to make money with pharmaceutical companies and not trying to work on on Arnold, he's like sitting by himself and just like throwing darts and he's complaining about, you know, how his ex-wife like did his designed his 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 house but here's the funny thing is like you've got the house but you still kept it so like you yeah. clearly can tell this man is lonely as all fuck yep so like seeing that him he finally gets what he wants that that's that kind of it warmed my heart a little bit and i don't think that was just you know from the covid <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, well, your internal body temperature was already turned up. So it yes, it was. It movie. was already turned up because of the COVID. But I, I really believe that this was this was warmed because of emotion. <laughs> emotion. But yeah, the ending, John, is well, it's a doozy. You know, they end up on the beach a year later, and you know, their Emma Thompson is now pregnant. Good for her. She chose this one, and. Uh, they're saying that, oh, well, you know, Danny Vio should have a kid, but he could be the one to carry it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Could there be a sequel? No. <laughs> if this movie had made bank, there would have been. And the this poster... movie did not make bank. This movie failed. It was a budget of $60 million. It only made $108.4 million. Okay. Yeah, that's not any good. No, that's terrible. But, all right, but I can already see the poster. Danny DeVito, big pregnant belly, and it's out, like, from his shirt. Arnold has, like, the, the whole heartbeat thing that doctors have. Yeah. Uh, I'm stupid. And, like, it's right on the belly. The whole heart. The yeah. stethoscope? Stethoscope, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's right in the belly. Emma Thompson's right above them going, Woo! like, question, like, can you believe it? And his, Danny DeVito's wife is looking down like, or pulling your hair like, you know, that's <laughs> Junior 2, Electric Boogaloo. Well, they would have to call it Junior the Second. 
Oh my God! Yeah, no, oh, that's marketing one hundred and one. That's Brian, marketing one hundred and one. Yeah, <laughs> Junior the second. One thing I did want to mention, we didn't talk about this, was one of the most unsettling parts of this movie besides the plot, the nightmare sequence. Do you remember the nightmare sequence, John? I can't ever forget it, Brian. <laughs> This is literally the thing of nightmares, and I don't know whose idea it was to do this, but early on in the movie, right after Arnold Schwarzenegger takes the first dose of Expect Danny and he gets impregnated by the by Danny DeVito, he has a dream that he is delivering the baby. And when he gets the baby, John, do you want to describe what the baby looks like? Okay. Well, before I even do that, like, it's so <laughs> weird because I don't know if they're trying to, like, fool us or pull us off guard, but, like, the nurse looks like somebody who works at Hooters or a stripper. Oh, she she looked she looked like she was a nurse in another type of movie. Yeah. Like, Arnold's having, like, some kind of wet yeah. dream, and she's but she's holding a baby, so it's like... She's oh. holding a baby. Yeah. And... I don't know if I should God bless because I don't even know if my worst nightmares are the best part of my day or the worst part of my day. But like the nightmare CGI of the oh baby that is handed to Arnold that they didn't get the people from Jurassic Park, folks. No, they did not. To paste Arnold's face onto an infant. And I, I'm a, all, I can only assume it's Arnold going up. Oh yeah, no, it, it, it. No one from Skywalker Ranch was involved in making that monstrosity. Or if it was, it was like the intern who failed at Skywalker Ranch, like failed at most basic things. They're like, okay, yeah, yeah, let's throw you a bone here. You can go work on Junior for Ivan Reitman. But Jesus Christ, man, it's nightmare fuel. That is what it is. It's like a morphed version of Arnold's face slapped on a baby's face, and it's complete it with like fit. it doesn't fit. It doesn't right? fit. It doesn't yeah. fit. His it, it's complete with the haircut too. Yeah, like complete with the term. It's like the Terminator's face on an infant's body, saying "Mama," and like you can tell that that baby is like, "Oh God, I don't want to be th- th- this kid to this mama." Imagine Arnold's face, but it's also the Ally McBeal baby at the same time. Yes. Like, Brian, what is what is that movie with Ewan McGregor where they're all drug addicts and the one tries to like train spotting train spotting? Yeah. Where the baby's yeah. crawling on the ceiling. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, that baby that you see in junior is the kind of one you see when you're detoxing. I oh, could, my God. It's, it's either yeah. a bad you're, you're having a bad trip. Yeah, <laughs> that's a bad trip right there. But no, it is it is one of the scariest fucking things in this movie. Like, if, if, imagine if you just took that and you looped that that baby over and over. That was torture right there. Yeah, fucking scary. See, one time I was in Target and they had a thing where you could set one iPad and it would play all the other iPads. And I said it to Jeff Goldblum, <laughs> Jurassic Park laugh. <laughs> on loop <laughs> for eight hours so they were no you didn't i did yeah and i like made sure they were all like a little bit different time i should have did it to that <laughs> oh my god <laughs> 10 hours of mama <laughs> oh geez yeah I, I i i didn't want us to leave the episode without talking about that because that was fucking how could terrifying we? terrifying but just kind of wrap it up here john some final thoughts on junior what are your final thoughts I I get the premise. So if I'm sitting in a boardroom and uh, Brian, do you know what studio distributed? Do I know this? what studio? Yeah. This was Universal Pictures. Okay. Yeah. Universal Pictures. Like you're sitting around a boardroom <coughs> like, what if Arnold Schwarzenegger who's pregnant? Ooh, ah, that's hilarious. Let's make it. But then they went out to try to loosely base it on science try to make all the characters grounded try to make it logical and i'm like your entire premise your was a poster as we started out saying arnold schwarzenegger is pregnant 
the Terminator's pregnant, the guy from Predator's pregnant, and you don't deliver any of the zany madcap madness that could come with that premise that I'm assuming somebody that bought their popcorn and their Mr. Pip extra like and the red vines wanted i i'm just like i don't i'm surprised that this movie is not more batshit insane like i assumed it would be and i can't believe the subtlety that went into making arnold schwarzenegger pregnancy movie yeah no i clearly someone was was asleep at the wheel in the green lighting process and clearly someone was like, well, it's kind of bizarre. It's kind of wacky. I also think that this is this is trying to recapture twins. I think that's what this movie is really designed to do. People really like twins. It's like you the know? Kevin Hart rock thing now. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, get Danny DeVito and Arnold back together. Yeah, and then this was the first time you had Danny DeVito and Arnold back together. So I think people were like, oh, this is like twins. So it's going to be good, right? It, and it's not and it, and it and especially once you really dig into like the plot and you really dig into like you know just just how problematic it is and 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 maybe it is coming at it from a modern lens you know like obviously in 94 i probably would have been like oh that's kind of funny arnold schwarzenegger is a, is pregnant that's goofy but i i think grown-ups probably were like the minute you watch it you're like there's some issues with this. Mm-hmm. You know, I would hope that anyone with half a brain would understand that there are some serious problems when it comes to like the agency of women in this movie. Like, I know it was 94, but Jesus fucking Christ. That's a problem in this movie. The agency of women is completely ignored completely ignored um and emma thompson is thrown in there for laughs somebody had to fall down on their butt yes but she's like a shakespearean actress so like her yeah one of of all people has to be the one to fall on her butt one of the finest actors of her any generation seriously whoa i'm falling into a pit yeah (laughs) yeah yeah that's that was one thing i did not quite get i'm like You've got Emma Thompson, who quite literally has like wor- worked on 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 in in theater, uh, and and you're just gonna make her the wacky fall down guy. Like that's what we're doing, okay? But I, I mean, maybe she just wanted to you know ex- branch out from Kenneth Branagh on movies. I don't know. <laughs> but but yeah, I I just I feel that this movie, if you turn your brain off, is probably okay. But once you really think about it, like I have over the course of this episode, you start to realize that there is some serious like moral and ethical problems with this movie. And for the movie to end on a happy everyone's great note kind of is a giant middle finger to those moral and ethical problems that the movie presents us with. It's it's basically like cotton candy as a movie like wasn't that fun? Didn't you have a good time? Like, you maybe have a bit of a stomach ache now, but don't blame it on the cotton candy. Don't think about it. Yeah. Yes. That's that's exactly what this is. This is a cotton candy movie. Yeah. If you watch it, just don't think too hard. <laughs> <laughs> don't think too hard. Don't expect to laugh out loud because that's also not going to be in there either. Yeah. Yeah. But good talk, John. Good talk. And my voice is still with us after an hour. Incredible. Six minutes. Yeah. Incredible. <clears throat> with that said, John, where can they find you at on the Internet? So by, well, Facebook and Instagram. By the time you listen to this episode, you will have the Dark Knight Rises episode available because uh, the night cool. we're recording this, it is finally coming out. It's been ready for two days, but I don't know what's wrong with my brain. Okay. And I keep like tweaking it a bit but it's ready and it's coming out tonight the epi- the, the night we record this so by the time you're listening to it it's available so go check it out on J does video nasties awesome awesome well i i have a i have a question for all of you if you've loved this episode if you've loved our talk and you're still here thanks for being here <laughs> 
thanks for sticking around long enough and not being distracted by all of our political views, which sometimes happens because it's the middle of election season. Um, but uh, do me a favor. If you want to support the show, best way to support the show is to share this episode with your friends and family. Okay. If you have a friend who really likes Arnold Schwarzenegger, share them this episode. Share them also our Arnold Month one. You know, <coughs> the, that sort of thing really helps grow the podcast. Outside of that, if you go to cinemapsychoshow.com forward slash follow, you can subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform. We've got them all there. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, they're all there. You can subscribe to us from that place right there, cinemapsychoshow.com forward slash follow. Outside of that, if you're watching us here on YouTube, do me a favor. You know what, what it is. Right at the bottom there, hit that like, hit that follow, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. That tells the algorithm that you love this stuff, that you love this stuff, because honestly, YouTube doesn't know unless you tell it that you want more of this stuff. So that helps us out a ton on the platform. Okay. And with that said, we will see you next time. Cheers.